Our story begins as we meet Ash, laying unconscious on the floor with a missing arm. Beside him, there's also an unconscious small girl. The mother dragon is confused and shocked. She gave a mark to Ash, but he decided to force the mark into the girl's body. He decided to give up on the dragon power to fulfill the little girl's wish of becoming a dragon breeder. The mother dragon approaches him, admiring his courage and kindness, and uses her power to heal his left arm. Nine years later, we meet Ash again as a student of the Dragonar Academy. This academy teaches kids how to train and raise their dragons. Everyone has the hope of becoming a dragon, the rank given to humans who have the strongest dragons in the world. Well, except for Ash, who only joined the academy because of his unique ability. He can ride other people's dragons. He hates his ability and doesn't want to be in the academy. He doesn't have memories from nine years ago when no dragon, despite having a full-sleeved dragon mark all over his arm. Everyone hates and mocks him, calling him the dead dragon breeder. Despite being used to this treatment, Ash doesn't know how to hold back. He knows he's useless, but he's ready to fight anyone who disrespects his unborn dragon. Even Princess Sylvia, not because she slapped him after he bumped into her dragon during practice, but because she said his dragon is already dead. He demands an apology from her, but she challenges him instead, telling him she will apologize if he beats her in the upcoming dragon race. And as a normal guy without a dragon would do, he accepts it. The day of the race arrives, and Ash uses the dragon of his only friend, the beautiful and popular student president, Rebecca, gives a speech to motivate everyone who will take place in the race. But that doesn't work well, so she just claims to go on a date with the winner, hyping up girls and boys all over the academy. The race begins, where dragons run along the city without anyone running away from them. They enter a dark tunnel, and some girls start blocking Sylvia's path. Ash sees this and bumps into them, forcing them to lose control over their dragons and fall behind, creating a way for Sylvia to get the lead. After making it outside the tunnel and running through the forest, Ash hears a noise nearby and investigates, where he comes across the crash site of an aircraft used during a dragon war. He meets Milgauss, who suddenly mentions the dragon that resides inside of him. The masked man mentions that he's cursed and he can sense any dragon. He remarks on how strong Ash's dragon is, despite being still young and wants to take his mark. He orders a girl to attack Ash and cut his arm off. He starts running into the forest to save himself, but the girl trips him with her weapon. She jumps on top of him, ready to take his arm off, but he manages to get free. He notices the cliff and realizes he doesn't have the power to fight her back. Without a second thought, he decides to give up on everything. He doesn't want his dragon to be taken and used by someone else. So he rushes to the girl and grabs her hand, pushing her away from his path as he jumps down the cliff. While falling, he thinks about how stupid and selfish it is to sacrifice his life just to save a dragon that was never born. But at that moment, his mark starts to glow. He feels his arm burning and time stops. A golden egg appears, and he touches it, believing his dragon is finally born. He smiles, people won't be able to make fun of him again. He will finally be a dragon breeder. He can finally get a new start to become a dragonar. The egg starts to crack, and he gets shocked to see that it's not a dragon, but a girl. He takes her to his room after she confirms to be the dragon princess of the strongest dragon family. In the next day, he takes her around the city to buy her clothes because, you know, dragons don't wear clothes, but he has a girl instead and decides to give her a name, Echo. His mark starts to glow and he starts to feel stronger. She explains that their strength increases based on their trust, and every time the mark glows their power will also increase. She goes to the bathroom and begins to worry Ash, as she's taking too much time. Sylvia, who had a change of heart and apologized to him, passes by and checks the bathroom for him. But they only find Echo's hat in some magic crystals. They realize Echo was kidnapped, and Ash starts to panic, remembering the masked man he met before Echo's been born. Sylvia explains the mark can be used to locate his dragon. He uses his power to focus on the mark. While thinking about the moment he met her, the mark starts glowing and some butterflies appear, leading them to a building. They hear Echo scream as they run inside, and Sylvia helps by blasting the doors with her magic. They see Angela, the one who kidnapped Echo and strapped her on a dissecting table. She wants to dissect Echo and find out why she is the only dragon born in human form. She casts a sleeping spell on them. Everyone falls asleep except Ash, 
who tries to fight the sleeping effects as he approaches Echo. She begs him to save her, but he cannot resist the effects of the spell. He falls and Echo starts crying and shouting for him to save her. Her feelings start to power up his mark, enabling him to get back up to destroy Angela's spell with a swing of his arm and release Echo. The next day, Rebecca goes to Ash and invites him and Echo to join her in Sylvia. She wants them to join the student council, but suddenly Echo gets up, noticing the presence of a powerful dragon. They all rush to the dragon's location and get shocked to see the town destroyed by a dragon rooted away as if it was a zombie. Echo decides to take the dragon's attention after seeing everyone running away screaming in fear. She shouts at it, being loud and rude, claiming she can easily beat it with one finger. But the zombie dragon attacks and restrains her with its tentacles. The zombie starts casting a massive spell, destroying buildings and setting the town on fire. Rebecca can't stand this destruction and summons her dragon in arc, a magical armor created by dragons for their masters, that increases the master's fighting power. She summons a large lance and uses it to destroy the zombie dragon's head, but it regenerates a second later. The zombie uses its laser beam again, forcing Rebecca to use a defensive barrier which reflects parts of the laser beam that almost hit Ash and Sylvia. She orders Ash to take Sylvia away, but she cannot move. She's frozen in shock on the ground. Ash wants to fight, but he can't do anything without Echo being free. He takes advantage to give Sylvia a payback from before and a wake-up call by slapping her away. He asks her to summon her dragon so he can use it to free Echo, but she's too slow, allowing the dragon to swallow Echo. Sylvia summons her dragon and helps Ash to get into the zombie dragon's throat, but the dragon manages to send him flying away. Sylvia saves him and they continue their attempt to save Echo. Ash believes she's still alive after feeling her power through the mark. He shouts that he will never give up on her and decides to take a leap of faith, jumping toward the zombie dragon's laser. Beam attack. The attack hits him, creating an explosion, and Ash appears floating in the sky, wearing his arc armor. He uses his connection to Echo to thank her and grasps his hand, feeling unstoppable with this new power. He teleports to Sylvia's dragon and uses it to take him into the zombie's dragon head. He uses his unique ability to control the zombie dragon and fly up. He finds out the dragon's name is Necromancia and that he was killed and used by someone in an experiment. The dragon asks him to end his despair and he summons a divine sword to destroy the dragon and save Echo. They celebrate their victory and tell Rebecca they will join the student council. Days later, the student council decides to use the summer training camp as an excuse to investigate some clues they got from the zombie dragon. The students are divided into groups and set out to investigate the place. However, at night, the student council groups up in Ash's room, and Luca barges in, stating that her dragon and their teacher went missing. The group head to the last place Luca's dragon was seen. They reach the building and notice the sky getting covered by clouds and lightning, as if it was preparing to activate something. The building's doors open, up, unleashing hundreds of zombie dragons to attack the students in the training camp. The group quickly hurries inside to find a clue about the culprit, just to be greeted by Milgaus, the masked man Ash met before Echo was born. He's the one who transformed Necromancia into a zombie dragon and now plans to kill and transform the students' dragons into zombies. Everyone is angry to see him except Sylvia, who's shocked, unable to speak any words. She recognizes Milgaus, real identity after he greets her. He is her oldest brother, Julius, who was executed for slaying his dragon. He quickly briefs them on his new necromancia creation and uses it to fight them. Echo gets restrained by the necromancia while Ash gets hit by its tentacles. He shouts for her name, unwilling to lose her again to a zombie dragon, and summons a new arc armor. Ash rushes to fight Milgaus in a fist fight, but is forced to dodge away when Milgaus uses his sword. The masked man uses his zombie dragons to attack Ash's companions, but our boy uses his magic armor to create some devices. These devices shoot laser beams at the undead dragons and turn them into stone. He then tries to corner Milgaus, but the latter cut down every device and pushes Ash back. His magic power is almost empty, and his arc disappears, only leaving his right forearm armor. They rush against each other to deal the final blow, 
but Ash uses his last device for a surprise attack, turning Milgao's arm into stone and punching him away. Without any other option, Milgaus decides to escape by jumping off the mountain. To save the remaining students, Luca jumps off the mountain and summons her dragon. She uses her special technique, the dragon dance, and creates a magic crystal that generates a magical rain and eliminates every zombie dragon. They head back to the academy where they're invited by the king, Sylvia's father, to celebrate their victory with a royal party. They immediately head to the palace where the king immediately knights Ash and gives him the rank of Arc Dragon on. One of the strongest dragon breeders in the world, they will celebrate their achievements with a royal ball where he sees Milgaus. They don't know his intentions, but they cannot disrupt the royal party until Ash notices that Echo should be already prepared but she is missing. Suddenly, one of the maids appears and reveals that Echo ran away. The maid tells the Miko disappeared after being told Ash couldn't be with her. She's a dragon and Ash is human. There is no way he will prefer to be with a dragon over a normal girl whom he can marry and have kids with. Echo's heart was broken and the maid followed her. But in the end, the maid was attacked and Echo got kidnapped. Ash and Sylvia head out on her dragon to try and find Echo's location. And suddenly, Ash's dragon mark starts burning his arm. A beam of light suddenly appears in front of them, revealing a dragon mark in the sky and creating a huge dragon egg. Ash feels Echo inside it but is worried that she isn't safe. He decides to get to the egg with the help of Sylvia's dragon. But the dragon starts behaving weirdly, forcing Ash and Sylvia to get off him. It joins several other dragons who get fascinated by the egg and fly toward it. The egg starts to break and reveals a huge necromancer which was once Echo. Ash can feel with his mark that is Echo, but at the same time, it's not her. There is only one person that could do it, Milgaus, who kidnapped her and forced some experiments on her, turning Echo into this. Talking about him, he confesses to his family that he's not Julius. He's in fact his dragon. Julius knew that his dragon was turning evil and decided to kill him, but got possessed by the dragon, who used the dragon mark to take over his body. The dragon's spirit leaves Julius' body and possesses Echo's necromancer, finally accomplishing his goal to have the strongest dragon body and is ready to destroy the world. Ash starts to panic and decides to look for a dragon to help the situation, but Sylvia stops him and calms him down. They borrow an aircraft and fly above the necromancer. Ash jumps on top of it and starts climbing, hoping to control it and restore Echo to normal. However, the necromancer starts moving violently to make him fall. Somehow, Echo is in a cage inside her mind after the body got possessed by Julius Dragon. There she meets Navi, the memories of all dragons who looks like Echo but older. She tells Echo to give Ash the power to fight back and save her, but Echo doesn't know how. Navi tells her to use her true feelings toward Ash to create his true arc armor. She sees Ash trying his best to save her. He doesn't want to lose her. He's willing to risk his life to save her. Tears run down her face as she sees him struggling, almost falling out to the ground and losing everything. But Luca saves him. She grabs him mid-air and takes him back up from where he jumps back to the zombie dragon. But in that second, while in the air, he sees Necromancer looking at him as if expecting him to jump and it shoots a magic beam at him. He cannot dodge or move. His friends shout his name as if he already lost his life. But when the attack is about to hit, a barrier appears in front of him to save him. He hears Echo's voice through his dragon mark. She tells him to accept her feelings. And in that same second, he gets his most powerful arc armor, an armor that he can keep invisible. While wearing it, he cannot believe how much power she gave him with this armor and summons the legendary sword, the Excalibur. Without thinking twice to save his dragon, Ash rushes toward Necromancer, cuts the magic attack in half, and with a single slash, he defeats the evil dragon, making it disappear in thin air. Saving Echo is she appears once again in front of him. 